In this episode I will demonstrate how to incorporate feeder gum into feeder rigs and what are the advantages of it. First things first, when to use a feeder gum. I would say that feeder gum is required in certain situations. Feeder gum is required when you are using braided line. Braided line obviously doesn't have any stretch at all. So you want to compensate that by using feeder gum. Also feeder gum is required when very fine hook links are used because fish are finicky and doesn't buy it when you would be using very thick or thicker lines so you need to scale down to get some bites and if you get a bite from a bigger fish feeder gum most of the time will be able to help you to land that bonus fish the best feeder gum on the market in my opinion is drennan one they do them in a couple of diameters and breaking strengths as well my favorite would be one which is rated to six pounds and it says that hook link should be up to four pounds so uh, and it's more or less true and uh, i would use uh, this six pound uh, feeder gum when i would be fishing with very fine hook links let's say 0 0.08 or even lower i don't want that my feeder gum would would be bottomed out when i am hooking that bigger fish and now I will talk how to use feeder gum in a feeder rig. Obviously I will have to tie a rig, so I will put those spools of feeder gum aside and will tie a very simple running feeder rig. I will go over all the steps. I will attach my shock leader line to my braided line using Albright's knot. That's enough of wraps for this demonstration. As always, when tying your own knots, don't forget to wet them. Right, we have our main line attached to our shock leader. I will use shorter shock leader, like a meter or so. Then on the shock leader I will slide a swivel with a clip in about size 10. You can use a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller in your own rigs as well. Now I will form a twizzled loop at the end of the shock leader. That's enough. Now I will tie a simple surgeon's knot. Double one. 
Again, when tying your own knot, don't forget to wet it just before pulling it tight. Now I will use a couple of Preston Innovation studs in size 8 to stop my swivel. Now as you can see my rig is more or less completed, so all I need to do is attach a feeder onto the clip. And that's it, this rig is now completed. Also, I will mention that I did demonstrate how to tie this rig in a separate video. I will put a link to that video just in the corner. And now let's attach our feeder gum to this loop. I will use thicker one in 6 pounds in this case. So it, everything is very simple. I will use a greener's knot to attach my feeder gum to this loop. Four turns most of the time are enough. As always, just before pulling it tight, don't forget to wet this knot when tying your own rig. And now let's slide the knot against the loop. That's it. I will trim off the tag end now, leaving probably a millimeter or so. Now, I would say that the best length of a feeder gum is about 5 to 7 centimeters. You don't want to go any longer than that because having very long and supple material, which feeder gum is, you will increase the chances of the rig tangling and also the stretch feeder gum has is just enough like in five or seven centimeters so and it's very simple I will measure just about five maybe or seven centimeters and then will hold like a little loop and then I will use ringer's loop tire to form a little loop at the end of feeder gum. Again, don't forget to wet this knot just before pulling it tight. Now I will trim off the tag end, leaving about millimeter again.
and that's it. We have attached a short piece of feeder gum to a feeder rig and by doing so we have plenty of elasticity in the feeder rig. That's awesome. And that's it for today guys. I hope this little video will be useful in your own angling. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.